Hey everybody, Brandon Fell here with Cycling Strong. It's been a long winter in here in Idaho. The snow is finally melting, spring's upon us. It's time to get the bike down to the garage and get ready for the riding season. I wanted to make this video to kind of show you the steps that I go through to make sure my bike is ready for the upcoming season. Things that you can do at home easily um, with just some of the basic materials. So the things I have here on my little bench that I want to show you is first of all, standard bike lube. Get a good bike lube, a rag to wipe off the excess lube once we put it on the chain, a good bike pump that's going to be able to tell us the correct pressure that's in the tires. A shock pump, we want to make sure that our shocks held there throughout the year and fill them up if they need to. Multi-tool, something really easy you can get a hold of anywhere. And then some polish and a rag. I'm going to polish up my bike, get all the nasty dust and leftover grime that I had from last season. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do now is just clean down the bike. I've got my polish right here. I'm going to spray it all over the frame, get ready to wipe off all the dust and uh, any dirt that I had left over from the season. And while I do this, for me it's important to kind of look over the frame, make sure that there's no cracks in the frame from any crashes that I had last year, and that uh, everything looks sharp. Sometimes as you ride, you might get some rock dings in there uh, that come up and hit the frame, um, some unexpected cracks. So it's a good time to start going through and make sure it looks, it looks safe and ready to ride. And don't be afraid to get in there and get all the nasty spots with your rag. Get it as clean as you can. But just know that you're going to get dirty again when you go out on the trail. Wipe off the components too. I get the derailleur. Make sure there's no big rock things in the derailleur from this last season. I always inspect too my crank arms and you can probably come in here and see I've got quite a few little rock dings as you're riding on the trail and you, you catch some some logs or rocks. I want to make sure that those are not going to be cracks that lead into where the spindle is on the pedal. And I look of course on both sides. And I've got some good dings there but nothing that's going to affect the riding of the bike this year. I look over the shock too. I want to see the stanchions on the shock. Make sure that there's no dings in there. If you do find some dings here on the stanchion you can get some really really fine grit sandpaper and wipe off the burrs. If you do have a big burr, every time the shock um, cycles into the canister here, that burr can damage these inner seals. So I look at that both on the rear shock, and then I'm going to come up here to the front shock, wipe that down and make sure that I don't have any burrs from a rock chip or anything nasty. Now that I've got that wiped down, I think what I'll do is we're going to start from the back of the bike and move forward here. The next thing I'm going to do, of course, is the derailleur here. And I'm just going to run through the gears to make sure everything is shifting properly. Now when I move the derailleur up into the low gear, I want to do that in a slow speed. I've had times where my limit screws were off or my derailleur hanger was bent. And if I ran the derailleur to my low gear fast, it would throw the chain into the spokes and cause all sorts of messes. So as you're moving into that low gear, just make sure you're doing it slow and cycle through to get up there. And you can see I just went into my low gear, but it's still not getting up into the correct gear there. So we do need to adjust this rear derailleur. One thing you can do on the derailleurs is of course come up here to your barrel adjuster on the handlebar. And if I tighten that up a little bit, and cycle through with the pedals, you're gonna to start to hear the chain start to tighten a little bit and it should pop up. In this case, it's not, which is telling me that I need to come back here and probably tighten up the cable a little bit more. So now that I'm down here into the high gear, I'll come back to, um, where the derailleur is, grab my multi-tool and tighten this up. And by doing that, I'll just unloosen this and pull the cable a little bit tighter. Okay, now that I've kind of adjusted my cable here, uh, I'm running through the gears and I find that, that like most of us, you get that nasty kind of jump. You've shifted the gear, but it's not locking directly into the gear that you want it to be in. It can be two things. It can be that your derailleur cable is either too tight or too loose. So in this case, I shift it up and it's not wanting to stay in that gear. So I'm actually gonna start tightening the cable at the barrel adjuster at the shifter to add a little bit more tension on the cable 
and the derailleur to allow that chain to get into the gear that I want. So just watch as I start to tighten that up a little bit. It just drops right into the gear that I want. So now I'm safe there. I click up, smooth, smooth, smooth. And it drops down, nice and smooth. If it's having a hard time climbing, you need to tighten the cable. If it's having a hard time falling, you need to loosen the cable. It's a really easy way to look at it. You kind of find that happy medium um, as you go through the gears. Now that the gears are all adjusted, next thing I want to do is go over the brakes. Um, and uh, we're running standard disc brakes on this bike. As I spin it, you got the poles on the, on the hub that are making that clicking noise, which are great. But it's really hard to listen to see if the, the rear brake is rubbing. So what I like to do is instead of spinning it um, the forward direction, the clockwise direction, I'm going to spin it counterclockwise. And the reason I do that is now it's nice and quiet and I'm listening for rubbing on the disc. As I spin it back, I hear a little bit of a rub. It's probably hard to pick up on the video, but uh, I do know that that disc is rubbing just a little bit against the brake pad. So what I'm going to do here is come over on the other side. I'm going to grab my multi-tool, and it's going to be a 5 millimeter Allen. And what I'm going to do is just loosen up the top bolt, just a little bit, not much. It's going to be a little bit of movement on the caliper itself, and that's what I want. I'm going to spin it backwards. I know this sounds really silly. And you might be able to hear that noise. As I spin it backwards, I'm going to reach up and I'm going to grab the brake cable, or the brake handle, and I'm going to grab it, squeeze it tight, and then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to tighten this up just a little bit. Spin it back again. Okay, I'm still hearing that rub. So sometimes if I grab that, it locks up against the caliper, or the, the caliper locks up against the rotor and can center itself. But in this case it didn't, so I'm just going to loosen up this top one a little bit. And I'm going to manually start to move that caliper until it stops making the noise, which actually sounds about right there. So I'm going to slowly tighten this up. If you tighten it down too tight too fast, the caliper might want to walk on the bolt. So just do it nice and easy and snug, a little bit at a time, spin to make sure that that caliper hasn't walked as that bolt tightens down. Good, nice and tight there. And I'm going to check the back one too to make sure that that also is nice and tight. Last thing you want to have happen is riding down the trail and these things come loose. It can be a pretty scary situation. Rear's taken care of. We've gone through the derailleur. We've gone now through the caliper. Next thing I want to do is look at the tire because again we're going to move forward, frontwards to uh, backwards to front. And on the tires, what I want to do is you know the tires are pretty low from sitting all winter, which is which is normal. I'm running tubeless tires. But I want to make sure there's no cracks in the tire. So if you look on the sidewall right here, I'm just going to slowly go through the tire to make sure that I have no cracking along the sidewall. Um, my bikes hang up in the garage. So there was no weight on the tires. But in the past, I've had where my bikes have been on the ground all winter. Tire gets flat, and there's get some cracks because they sat for so long. So I just want to make sure there's no cracking on the sidewall on both sides, which this actually looks really good there. Now I'm safe to pump up the tire. If you do see some cracking on the sidewall, I, I would recommend getting a new tire. Now that we've checked the sidewall of the tire, it's time to pump up the tire to get it to the right pressure. So I've loosened up the Presta bow. I'm sticking the pump onto the tire itself, lift up the lever that locks it in place. I look at my pressure, and of course, these tires are pretty low. It's not even coming up on my pressure gauge. Tire pressure is a really, it's an individual setting. Um, some guys like low pressure, some guys like high pressure. So depending on your weight, your riding styles will really depend on the pressure that you can put in the tires. If we look on the sidewall of the tire, you're always going to find kind of a rating. It'll be anywhere from between, say, 30 PSI and 60 PSI, or 20 PSI and 40 PSI. So there's always a range that the manufacturers put on the tire, but it comes down to what you like and how you like the feel of the bicycle. Myself, I run a little bit lower pressure because I am running tubeless. If you're running tubes, if you run too low a pressure, you can get into a pinch flat when you go over top of rocks. But myself, I'm running tubeless tires, so I can run a little bit lower. So on my enduro bike right here, I usually run the back around 28 PSI, maybe 27. And then my front, I run that about 29, maybe 30 PSI. And again, that's all depending on the condition that I'm riding in. Um, springtime, a little bit muddy, softer uh, trail out there. I might run a little bit lower just to make sure I get that extra traction as I'm going through the mud.
Now that we've got the tire pressure set both in the back wheel and the front wheel, I'm going to inspect the brakes on the front tire. Just like I did in the back, I want to spin that wheel and listen for any rubbing sounds. And the front one sounds good. I don't have any rubbing noise there. So we're ready to go on the front. Okay, now that we've gone through the brakes and we've gone through the tires, the gears, um, next thing I want to do is go through the shocks to make sure that I, the air pressure is saving the shocks and if I need to add any air, take it away. So I've got a standard shock pump right here and you can pick these up online or your local bike shops. I, I find them very handy. I usually take them with me in the vehicle when we go for a ride, depending on the trail conditions or what we're doing, I might change the, the pressure of the shock. Now that I've got that hooked up, you can see that the pressure gauge indicates that I have about 145 PSI in the rear shock. I like my rear shock to be a little bit more firm for the trail conditions that we have here in Idaho. And when I finished riding this bike, I had it about 175. So I have lost a little bit of PSI throughout the winter. It could be with the cold changes in temperature in the garage, something happened, or I could have a seal leak. So it's something I'm gonna definitely look into to make sure I'm okay. Now that I'm done with the back shock, I'm gonna to move to the front shock right here. The one thing I like about the rock shock is they actually put an air chart on the back of the fork leg to kind of give you um, a starting point when it comes to filling up your front shock. I'm weighing in around 150 pounds, so according to this, I should be running anywhere between 55 and 65 PSI. Now this is a starting point, that doesn't mean that's exactly where you're gonna have it, because every rider is different, you like the way maybe a big bump fills or a small bump. So really, you just use that as the starting point, and as you're riding on the trail, you can adjust it if you need to. So one of the last things I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna run through the bike and make sure all the bolts are tight, both on the stem, um, the handlebars, the brake levers, and so forth. It's been a long time since I ran the bike, and I can't remember if everything was tight when I put it away, or maybe, you know, I just never checked it before, and things could be getting loose. Now that we've gone through the bike and the way of the gears, the brakes, the shocks, the last thing I'm gonna do now is lube the chain. Um, I use Demontex, one of my favorite lubes I like on my mountain bike, and what I'll do is take my chain loop here, and I'm gonna drip it on the chain as I pedal backwards, and I'll do four or five rotations to make sure that I'm getting enough lube on the chain. Once I've lubed up the chain, I'm gonna take a rag and wipe off the excess. Pedaling backwards again just to continue to wipe off that, that lube, and that'll help get the lube to within the links of the chain. The reason I like to wipe off the lube is I can't tell you how many times I've been out on the trail with guys and I've watched all of the grind that gets stuck to people's chains because they put so much lube on the chain but they don't wipe it off when they're done. So remember, after you lube your chain, take a rag and wipe off the excess. Also, use a drip lube and not an aerosol. Um, one thing you've got to worry about when you're using an aerosol when it comes to a bike with disc brakes is if I sit here with an aerosol can and I spray the chain, the overspray from that aerosol is actually going into the rotor and into the brake pads and that can ruin your brake. So I really recommend that when you're using um, or when you're riding a bike with disc brakes, use a drip lube and not an aerosol. So that's it for our quick run through video on getting your bike ready for spring. I hope you enjoy being out there on the trails and keep cycling strong.